We know that all living things need food, water and air to survive. The oxygen provided by respiration is used to convert food into energy. While humans use their respiratory organs to take in oxygen, plants have no such specialized organs. This is because plants utilize less oxygen for the oxidation of food. Plants utilize only a small amount of food for oxidation and the rest is used in building their body in the form of cellulose. Further, the demand for oxygen is supplied during photosynthesis where oxygen is an end product. Plants respire through small openings called the stomata on leaves and lenticels on stems and roots. Unlike animals, each part of the plant takes care of its oxygen needs. Plants respire at a slower rate as compared to animals. In the woody stems, the living cells are present close to the surface and aid in the diffusion of gases. Diffusion of gases is also facilitated by the presence of loosely arranged parenchyma cells that provide air spaces. Next to respiration, the requirement of food becomes an important thing for survival. Humans and animals are heterotrophs in the sense that they obtain food from plants and other animals. Saprophytes like bacteria and some fungi feed on dead organisms. Green plants and cyanobacteria are the only organisms that can synthesize their own food using photosynthesis. They are the food source of the world as animals either directly or indirectly depend on them for food. The superficial layers of plants contain cells that possess chloroplast which aids in trapping sunlight to manufacture food. In this process Light energy is converted into chemical energy and stored in the bonds of carbohydrates like glucose, sucrose and starch. All other non-green parts such as woody stem and roots don't have chloroplast and hence they have to be supplied with food from leaves. The process of breathing is connected to the oxidation of food inside the cells. While breathing involves gas exchange between organisms and the environment, respiration involves the breakdown of the CC bonds of complex compounds of food using oxygen to release energy inside the cells. In eukaryotes, it takes place in three distinct stages namely glycolysis in cytoplasm, Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain or ETC in the mitochondria. Since it takes place inside the cells, it is called cellular respiration. The oxidized compounds are called respiratory substrates. Carbohydrates are the usual substrates for cellular respiration. But proteins, fats and other organic acids are also used by plants in certain conditions. During the oxidation of respiratory substrates, energy is not released directly in the cell. Instead, it is released slowly in a series of steps controlled by several enzymes. While a small part of the energy is released as heat, most of it is used for synthesizing adenosine triphosphate or ATP, a high energy molecule. ATP is utilized for carrying out all the activities 
such as absorption, transport, movement, reproduction, and breathing. Compounds like NADH formed during the oxidation of respiratory substrates are utilized in the ETC to derive energy in the form of ATP. The carbon skeleton obtained during respiration is used in the synthesis of other biomolecules like nucleic acids. When the oxidation of food substances takes place in the presence of oxygen, it is called aerobic respiration. It yields water and carbon dioxide as the byproducts. This type of respiration takes place in humans, plants and some bacteria. When the oxidation of food substances takes place in the absence of oxygen, it is called anaerobic respiration. It yields alcohol and carbon dioxide as the byproducts. This type of respiration takes place in anaerobes and archaea. Anaerobes are divided into facultative anaerobes and obligatory anaerobes. Examples of facultative anaerobes include Escherichia coli that can survive in the presence as well as absence of oxygen. Examples of obligatory anaerobes include Clostridium tetani that survive only in the absence of oxygen. All living organisms contain cells that derive energy by breaking down nutrients like glucose during the process of respiration. The energy thus released is trapped in the form of adenosine triphosphate or ATP. The energy currency of the cell. The breakdown of nutrients takes place with the help of enzymes that catalyze biochemical reactions. Glycolysis is a 10-step process that takes place in the cytoplasm of cells. It takes place in both aerobic as well as anaerobic organisms as it doesn't involve oxygen. It was first identified in yeast cells and mammalian tissues by Emden, Meyerhoff and Paranus and hence is popularly called the EMP pathway. The term glycolysis is derived from the Greek words glycis meaning sweet and lysis meaning splitting. It involves the cellular degradation of glucose to pyruvate or pyruvic acid. In plants, sucrose, obtained from photosynthesis, is converted into glucose and fructose by the enzyme invertase. The glucose thus produced is utilized in the glycolysis process. Glycolysis takes place in 10 steps involving two phases, preparatory and payoff phase. The preparatory phase starts with the phosphorylation of 6-carbon glucose using ATP to form glucose 6-phosphate. It is catalyzed by the enzyme hexokinase. Glucose 6-phosphate thus formed isomerizes to form fructose 6-phosphate. Fructose 6-phosphate is then phosphorylated using ATP to form fructose 1,6-biphosphate. The fructose 1,6-biphosphate splits into two molecules of 3-carbon 3 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde -3 or PGAL and dihydroxyacetone phosphate or DHAP. As DHAP can't be utilized directly in the payoff phase, it isomerizes into PGAL. Thus, two molecules of PGAL are formed from one molecule of fructose 1,6-biphosphate. These reactions complete the preparatory phase of glycolysis.
The payoff phase starts with the phosphorylation of PGAL using inorganic phosphate to form 1,3-biphosphoglycerate or DPGA. The two redox equivalents removed from PGAL are transferred to NAD plus to form NADH2. The DPGA thus formed undergoes dephosphorylation to form 3-phosphoglycerate or PGA. This is an energy yielding step as the phosphate released from DPGA is captured by ADP to form ATP molecules. As the inorganic phosphate is directly transferred from a substrate to the ADP molecule to form ATP, it is called substrate level phosphorylation. The phosphate group in 3-phosphoglycerate is relocated to form 2-phosphoglycerate, which is then converted into 2-phosphoenol pyruvate or PEP by losing a water molecule. The final step in the payoff phase is the energy yielding reaction involving dephosphorylation of PEP to form 3-carbon pyruvate. The inorganic phosphate released from the PEP molecule is captured by ADP to form ATP molecule leading to substrate level phosphorylation. This ends the process of glycolysis. Of the 10 reactions, the three involving glucose, fructose 6-phosphate and phosphoenol pyruvate as substrates are irreversible while the others are reversible. As two molecules of PGAL are formed from fructose 1,6-biphosphate, the reactions in the payoff phase will occur two times, once for each PGAL. The preparatory phase utilizes two ATP molecules to break down glucose, while the payoff phase yields four ATP molecules and two NADH2 molecules. Thus, the net gain from a single molecule of glucose in the glycolysis process is 2 ATP and 2 NADH2. The key product of glycolysis is pyruvate. It can be utilized in different ways based on the availability of oxygen. In the presence of oxygen, it is utilized by aerobic organisms in Krebs cycle for complete oxidation. In the absence of oxygen, it is utilized by anaerobic organisms in lactic acid or alcohol fermentation. In a plant cell, glycolysis leads to the formation of pyruvic acid or pyruvate. Further, it is broken down based on the availability of oxygen. In the absence of oxygen, the cell undergoes fermentation. The term fermentation is derived from the Latin word fervor, which means to boil. In it, complex substances like carbohydrates undergo incomplete oxidation. Based on the end product, the process can be classified as either alcohol fermentation or lactic acid fermentation. The fermentation of alcohol takes place in yeast, which are facultative anaerobes. In them, pyruvic acid is reduced to carbon dioxide and ethanol with the help of enzymes. In this process, First, the pyruvate is decarboxylated by pyruvate decarboxylase to acetaldehyde. The enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase uses NADH to reduce the acetaldehyde molecule to ethanol. The NAD plus so formed is reused in the glycolysis process. Yeast is widely used. 
in the production of alcohol beverages like wine and beer and to bake bread. The fermentation of lactic acid is carried out by bacteria like lactobacillus which are obligatory anaerobes. In them, pyruvic acid is reduced to lactic acid or lactate. The NADH formed in the glycolysis process is reoxidized to NAD plus by alcohol dehydrogenase to be reused in the glycolysis process. For example, curd has a sour taste due to the presence of lactate formed by lactobacillus in fermentation. Lactate is also formed in animal cells under certain conditions. During physical exercise, muscle cells undergo anaerobic respiration. The enzyme lactate dehydrogenase uses NADH to reduce the pyruvate molecule to lactate. In this process, NADH is reoxidized to NAD and used in the glycolysis pathway. The accumulation of lactate is the reason for the stiffness in the muscles when you exercise. Both alcohol and lactic acid fermentation yield less energy. Not even 7% of the energy present in the glucose is released. And of that, only some amount of energy is trapped in the form of ATP. Thus, anaerobic respiration yields a net gain of 2 ATPs after deducting the ATPs required for the preparatory phase of glycolysis. In anaerobic respiration, the NADH formed is reoxidized. Thus, the synthesis of ATP from NADH molecules similar to aerobic respiration is also not possible. Also, the products formed are either alcohol or lactic acid, which is hazardous in nature. In fact, yeast is poisoned to death when the concentration of alcohol reaches 14%. Thus, we can conclude that fermentation releases less energy than the process followed in the presence of oxygen. You know that glycolysis results in pyruvate. Based on the availability of oxygen, pyruvate either undergoes anaerobic or aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration involves the transport of pyruvate from cytoplasm into the mitochondria for complete oxidation in Krebs cycle. It also involves the transfer of hydrogen ions and electrons from the coenzymes NADH plus H plus and FADH2 to oxygen in the electron transport system or ETS for ATP synthesis. Now, let's see how the complete oxidation of pyruvate takes place. Inside the mitochondria, the pyruvate undergoes oxidative decarboxylation in the presence of the pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme NAD plus and coenzyme A. The NAD plus is reduced to NADH plus H plus and coenzyme A combines with the acetyl group of pyruvate to form acetyl COA. The acetyl coenzyme A thus formed enters Krebs cycle, which has been named after the scientist Sir Hans Adolf Krebs. Krebs cycle starts with the reaction of acetyl coenzyme A with oxaloacetic acid to form citric acid catalyzed by the enzyme citrate synthase with the release of coenzyme A. 
The first product of Krebs cycle is citric acid. And hence, the cycle is also called the citric acid cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle. The citric acid thus formed isomerizes to form isocitric acid. The isocitric acid is then oxidized in the presence of NAD plus to form oxalosuccinic acid which is later decarboxylated to form alpha-ketoglutaric acid. This alpha-ketoglutaric acid undergoes oxidative decarboxylation using coenzyme A to form succinyl coenzyme A along with the reduction of NAD plus to NADH plus H plus ion. The succinyl coenzyme A formed is hydrolyzed to succinic acid with the release of coenzyme A. This reaction also results in the production of guanosine triphosphate or GTP, a high energy molecule from GDP, by substrate level phosphorylation. The GTP thus formed is again converted back into GDP coupled with the synthesis of ATP from ADP. The succinic acid formed in the previous reaction is oxidized to fumaric acid with the reduction of FAD plus to FADH2. The fumaric acid is hydrolyzed to malic acid which is then oxidized to oxaloacetic acid with the reduction of NAD plus to NADH plus H plus ion. For Krebs cycle to run continuously, oxaloacetic acid, NAD plus and FAD plus need to be regenerated. The summary equation of Krebs cycle is as shown here. The net gain of Krebs cycle in the conversion of two molecules of pyruvate is two molecules of ATP, eight molecules of NADH plus H plus, and two molecules of FADH2. So far, the energy harvested has resulted in the direct synthesis of only four molecules of ATP. Further generation of energy as part of aerobic respiration takes place in the electron transport system or ETS. As you know, glycolysis and the Krebs cycle together result in the formation of reduced coenzymes such as 10 molecules of NADH plus H plus ions and 2 molecules of FADH2 and 4 molecules of ATP. These reduced coenzymes need to be oxidized to release and utilize the energy stored in them. This is made possible by the transport of protons and electrons from these coenzymes to oxygen through electron carriers present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. This metabolic pathway of electron transport is called the electron transport system or ETS. ETS serves three important functions in aerobic respiration. It regenerates the oxidized form of coenzymes to be used in glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. It transports 2H plus and 2 electrons to oxygen and it utilizes the energy of the coenzymes in the production of ATP. ETS comprises several electron carriers that include NADH dehydrogenase complex or complex 1, ubiquinone or complex Q, succinate dehydrogenase complex or complex 2, cytochrome BC1 complex or complex 3, cytochrome C and cytochrome C oxidase or complex 4. Electrons from NADH plus H plus are transferred through complex 1 to ubiquinon 
and protons are moved from the matrix of the mitochondria to the intermembrane space. In the same way, electrons from FADH2 are transferred through complex 2 to ubiquinon and protons are moved from the matrix of the mitochondria to the intermembrane space. Ubiquinon transfers the electrons to complex 3. Complex 3 transfers the electrons to complex 4 through cytochrome C. Here too, some protons are moved from the matrix of the mitochondria to the intermembrane space. Cytochrome C is a mobile carrier attached to the inner membrane of the mitochondria and helps in the transport of electrons between complex 3 and complex 4. Complex 4 contains cytochrome A and cytochrome A3. It transfers the electrons to the final electron acceptor, oxygen. Oxygen, on receiving the electrons, reacts with 2H plus ions and reduces to water and thereby drives the ETS. This reaction can be summarized as 2H plus plus 2E minus plus half O2 which results in H2O plus energy. Now let's see how the electron transport chain is coupled to ATP synthesis. As you saw, the electron transport and movement of protons creates a proton gradient across the mitochondrial membrane. The protons in the intermembrane space need to be pumped back into the mitochondrial matrix to maintain equilibrium. As the mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to protons, they are pumped through a membrane protein called ATP synthase or complex 5. ATP synthase consists of two components, F0 and F1. While F0 is an integral protein that is used as a channel for proton transport, F1 is a peripheral protein and a catalytic site responsible for ATP synthesis. The energy derived from the proton pumping is used for the synthesis of ATP. Thus, when two protons are pumped from the intermembrane space to the mitochondrial matrix, one molecule of ATP is synthesized. The number of ATP molecules synthesized through ATP synthase depends on the nature of the electron donor. For example, oxidation of NADH plus H plus results in three molecules of ATP. Whereas, oxidation of FADH2 results in two molecules of ATP. Aerobic respiration uses energy conserved in coenzymes during oxidation reduction reactions to create the proton gradient required for phosphorylation. Unlike photophosphorylation, which uses light energy. This is why the aerobic respiration process is also known as oxidative phosphorylation. The net gain of ATP produced during aerobic respiration can be calculated based on the assumptions that the glycolysis, Krebs cycle and ETS takes place in sequential order NADH plus H plus produced during glycolysis is transported into mitochondria for oxidation. The intermediates formed are not used for synthesis of other compounds and only the glucose molecule is respired and no other molecule is used as a substrate for respiration. Based on these assumptions, we can calculate that aerobic respiration results in a net gain of 38 ATP molecules from complete oxidation of the glucose molecule 
into carbon dioxide and water. Fermentation, on the other hand, results in a net gain of two ATP molecules from the partial breakdown of the glucose molecule. The amphibolic pathway involves both catabolism and anabolism, where catabolism stands for the breakdown of complex substances to produce energy and anabolism stands for the synthesis of complex substances from simple substances. So far, we have seen how the glucose substrate is oxidized during glycolysis and observed the Krebs cycle during aerobic respiration. But plants also use substances such as fats and proteins as respiratory substrates. Though pure fats or proteins cannot be directly used as substrates, they can enter as intermediary substrates of glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. Now, let's see how fats and proteins are utilized as respiratory substrates. Fats are first broken down into glycerol and fatty acids. Glycerol is then converted into PGAL, an intermediary substrate of glycolysis. In the same way, Fatty acids are broken down to form acetyl coenzyme A, an intermediary substrate of the Krebs cycle. Similarly, proteins are broken down by protease enzymes into amino acids. These amino acids are converted into different intermediary substrates of the Krebs cycle, such as pyruvate. Thus, in addition to glucose, plants use fats and proteins as respiratory substrates to produce energy. These processes describe the role of the respiratory pathway in catabolism. The respiratory pathway also plays a role in anabolism. The synthesis of complex substances like carbohydrates, fats and proteins. When the plant requires proteins or carbohydrates, it can synthesize them by withdrawing some of the substrates in the respiratory pathway. For example, the PEP formed during glycolysis is withdrawn and used for the synthesis of proteins or carbohydrates. Likewise, if the plant requires fats, it withdraws acetyl coenzyme A and citrate from the Krebs cycle to synthesize them. Thus, the respiratory pathway is involved in both catabolism and anabolism and is called an amphibolic pathway. As you know, Aerobic respiration involves the consumption of oxygen and expulsion of carbon dioxide. The respiratory quotient RQ or respiratory ratio is calculated based on the volume of carbon dioxide expelled to the volume of oxygen consumed. As plants use more than one substrate for respiration, RQ depends on the respiratory substrate used. For example, when carbohydrates are used as the respiratory substrate, the RQ value is 1, which means the volume of carbon dioxide expelled equals the volume of oxygen consumed. But when fats or proteins are used as the respiratory substrate, the RQ value is less than 1. That is, 0 0.7 for fats and 0 0.9 for proteins. 
which means the volume of carbon dioxide expelled is less than the volume of oxygen consumed. This is why glucose is used as the primary substrate for respiration by plants.